Uh, thank you everyone for joining. We've got uh, quite a nice group of people here for today's uh, talk on understanding stroke index. Um, as you may have noticed, uh, we had a last minute change in the presenter today. So it's going to be myself, Katie Meyer, presenting instead of Tristan. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to, uh, to make it today. Um, so let's just dig right into it. Who is Katie Marr? I am a marketing and sales professional that uh, I, I run the marketing and sales teams here at Tritonware. Um, I've been in marketing and sales for roughly the past 10 years, but more importantly to everybody watching this show, I've actually been in the swimming world for about the last 20 years. I started in the early 90s as a swimmer myself. When I was done swimming, I turned to coaching. Um, when I went out and got a job in the business world in sales and marketing, my son then became a swimmer. And while my son was swimming, I sat on the board for his swim team. So I sort of have sat in all of the different seats when it comes to swimming. Um, not that I consider myself an expert by any means, but at least I have a firm grasp on, on what the, uh, the field is about. Um, another couple fun facts about me, I swam during the Dwayne Millar and Mark Tewksbury era and in 2001 I swam in a relay across Lake Huron. For those that don't know, that's a 50 mile lake or a 50 mile stretch of lake that uh, a group of us swam across to raise money for my, my childhood swim team. So what we're going to cover today would be an overview of Triton Wear. Uh, we're going to talk about the origins of stroke index, um, how it's measured, how to interpret it in different scenarios, the benefits of it, and then move into a QA session. So jumping right into it, what is Triton Wear? Um, so it's a wearable device that goes on the back of the swimmer's head and collects uh, 12 different metrics um, based on the movement of the head. Uh, those metrics are transmitted in real time through the live application called Tritonware Live. Um, the information is, it, it tracks all swimmers simultaneously that you have in the water um, so that you no longer have to actually try and collect splits and, and stroke rates and all of those sorts of things independently. You can do it all automatically through the app. Um, and then it records all of that information in the, in the swimmer's profile so that you can go back to it or the swimmer can go back to it after practice um, to be able to really dig in and find out exactly what it is that they're doing in practice. Um, so with that said, let's dig into where did stroke index come from? So in 1979, Craig and Pendergast, uh, two researchers, looked at stroke rate, DPS and velocity in swimming and found that DPS at a slow stroke rate was a great predictor of maximum speed. Uh, the study was called the relationship of stroke rate, distance per stroke and velocity in competitive swimming. So what they did was they had swimmers do different DPS drills, had them get faster and faster and faster as they did it. Um, each drill was only one length. So they did it over and over and over again until they couldn't get any faster. And what they actually were able to find was that the swimmers who could get the fastest were the ones that had the best DPS at the slowest stroke rates. Um, so fast forward from 1979 to 1985, and we have a group of four researchers in the US, Castile et al, for those of you that are avid researchers. Um, they wanted to find a way to measure energy expenditure during swimming without having any equipment in the way. They didn't want people wearing equipment during the swim because it was going to impact the results. So they needed to find a way to quickly get the results within 20 seconds of the end of each length. Um, they came up with something called backwards extrapolating using VO2 max at the end of the swim. Um, so once they sort of mastered that, then they moved into looking at being able to measure the energy expenditure without any special equipment at all. Um, and so just looking at the metrics and, and this is the moment when stroke index was actually born. So then in the 2000s, uh, there were several more groups who performed similar studies across the same field. Um, and each of them further explored the relationship between stroke parameters and efficiency. Um, and, and so they all came up with sort of the same type of conclusion. Um, so what's really important is that when people are doing research from this perspective now, they're often just using stroke index as a stand in for how uh, how stroking, how efficient stroking is. So now that we have a bit of a history of what stroke index is, let's take a look at how it's measured. 
So it's really uh, speed times distance per cycle. Um, so the way that we measure it is speed times distance per stroke times a cycle multiplier. Um, the speed is measured typically in minutes per second. Um, you can you can choose in the app different ways to measure the speed, I believe. Um, the really important thing is if you only track DPS, then athletes could drop their speed to increase their DPS, um, which isn't really what you're looking for. You really want it to be both combined. So measuring stroke index ensures that the athlete maintains their speed while they're increasing the DPS. And the reason that we, we, we rank it per cycle rather than per stroke is to make all of the values for each stroke sort of in the same range. Um, it allows us to look at the values for different strokes and expect to see a similar range of results. They're obviously not going to be exact, um, but if we didn't do this, then free and back would have much smaller results. And by extension, they would generate comparatively smaller stroke index results. Um, next one. So then when we look at how to interpret it, um, so first I'll take you through some of the key points uh, and then I will walk you through the, the results that we typically see in, in the system. So a distance swimmer is obviously gonna have more stamina to sustain a lower stroke rate and DPS for a longer duration. Um, in a short race, it's, it's definitely more about pure speed produced than it is about efficiency. So we don't spend as much time focused on uh, stroke index in, in shorter races. Long distances, it's more about the efficiency to sustain throughout the entire race. So this is where stroke index becomes important. Um, obviously, uh, stroke index is going to decrease from the longer races to the shorter races. So long distance swimmers are going to have a higher SI than sprinters. Um, and even if the same person does a short or a long race, their, their stroke index is gonna drop throughout that process as well. As expected, it will be a higher number in males than in, in, in females, simply due to the strength difference between these two groups. Higher international level swimmers are, are gonna have a much higher stroke index than, than those that do not swim at the national level. Again, this is a sheer representation of strength and conditioning. It's been found to be far more valuable for adult swimmers. Um, but may not be as useful for measuring the younger swimmers. So when we talk about younger swimmers, we're talking about like 12, 13 and younger. Um, so anybody like that 14 and older sort of range, this is a, this is a good measure for. So when we look at the different strokes, um, butterfly has a cycle multiplier of one because both arms move simultaneously. So it's a one full cycle per stroke. Um, the typical results we see returned here are between 1.31 and 3.76, with the average value being about a 2.51. As a general rule, fly is a high intensity stroke to perform. So the movements to produce the stroke require more effort to propel the body through the water than any other. So for this reason alone, uh, the stroke strategy is typically a longer, stronger strategy. So it would it would result in a slightly higher stroke index. For freestyle, the cycle multiplier is two. Uh, it accounts because we have to account for both individual arm movements. Um, being the fastest stroke of all of the strokes, it typically returns the highest stroke index of all of the strokes as well. Um, the typical results here range from 1.22 on the low end to 4.87 on the high end and the average value returning is uh, 3.06. In terms of backstroke, similarly to freestyle, it is a cycle multiplier of two again. Uh, the bottom end here is slightly lower than both fly and free at a 1.17, but the top end is much higher than fly, almost on par with free at 4.70. Average stroke index for backstroke would be about a 2.89. Again, backstroke is a far less physical effort to execute a complete stroke. Than, so this is why we see it higher than uh, a butterfly. Um, and finally, breaststroke. Uh, the cycle multiplier here is same as fly is a one. And that's, again, because it's, it's a single fluid motion of the arms at the same time. We also know that breaststroke is the slowest and most technical of all of the strokes. So we expect to see a slightly lower stroke index for this one across the board. 
So the typical results we see here are between a 0.94 on the low end, and they climb up to 3.34 on the high end, and the overall average here being of uh, about 2.15%. In terms of benefits, when we're talking about what we expect um, from, from looking at stroke index, we track progress over time to identify and provide direction on where improvements are needed. That's the, the main and key reason that we would use stroke index. Um, we want to pay attention to how changes in the swimmer's strokes in terms of their DPS, their stroke rate, their speed. We want to, we want to measure how that's changing and how it influences their stroke index. Um, we want to focus on lengthening strokes while maintaining speed. So that's basically the, the entire premise of, of stroke index. And this helps us realize what swimmers need to work on to improve each of their strokes in the water. Um, and then we can also use it to compare efficiencies, different strokes for different folks. How's that? <laughs> um, so we can use it to figure out uh, where people are more efficient and, and, and inefficient. So now that you know everything there is to know about stroke index, probably not, but maybe some, let's take a quick look at how to use this in practice. So the ideal place to start with, uh, with Tritonware, uh, you don't wanna get into a data overload scenario. So we wanna make sure that you're starting out with a single metric. Um, and, and frankly, stroke index is, is one of the better ones to choose because it sort of sets the tone for the rest of the metrics. If you can get a handle on how your stroke index is working, then being able to understand the rest of your metrics sort of falls in line from there. So the key here would be to master your stroke index before you add any more in. You can take the time to teach swimmers about it. So making them understand that a longer stroke with a higher DPS with faster swimmer will deliver a higher stroke rate. And again, you're going to want to tailor that to whether they're a long distance swimmer or a sprinter because they're gonna want different results depending on what type of style of swimmer they are. And then you can instruct the athlete on, on how to push for a higher number. Uh, they'll quickly realize that there's a balance between this and it'll quickly get them engaged in the number without, without allowing them to become overwhelmed. And then we wanna use this process. We wanna to start to isolate specific points of weakness. So with your swimmer's buy-in, you can easily focus on and improve the weaknesses that you're able to identify by using this number. One coach that we've seen do a really good job of this uh, has been Sean Callen with Trident Aquatics. He tuned into the other metrics as well, but he really focused on this, metrics with, this metric with his team for an entire season. Um, and throughout this season, he was able to see significant improvements in both the quality of swimming and the stroke index number itself increasing. And he was also able to identify major PBs at the end of the season across the entire team. Um, Sean went so far as to say uh, that Tritonware did play a major role in his team accomplishing this, this, this feat. So we thank Sean significantly for, for making that statement. Um, a secondary benefit that came as part of this focus on stroke index for his team was when one of his swimmers was being scouted by NCAA recruiters. They started asking about stroke rate, DPS, et cetera, as they typically do. Um, and this swimmer was actually able to rhyme off not only his typical metrics, but was also able to share his stroke index, which floored the recruiting coaches, seeing that such a young athlete was able to have such a firm grasp of his technical capabilities through the numbers. It's not something they typically see, and it made him far more desirable as a recruit. Um, so this speaks very clearly to the value in terms of education both athletes and coaches get in terms of the numbers. Um, and it, it goes far beyond just getting faster to making more educated, more desirable athletes as they move up the ranks of the swimming communities.